Alright guys, welcome to another video real quick. We're going to do two more videos ultimately with this kind of series. Uh, this video is actually going to describe how the game is played of Dragon Ball Super. I'm going to be using my Demigra deck, which the second video, which is going to be kind of a series of this, is going to actually explain this particular deck. Uh, first video, I'm just going to kind of show you how this kind of game is played. So ultimately there's a few different things you got to know before you even start the game. Is First off, there's a few areas. First off, up here, kind of if you play Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh, it's kind of simple. This is your battle area. This is where pretty much every single one of your creatures uh, pretty much will go. Your leader stays over here in the upper left hand corner. Here in the center part of your mat or whatever player you're using is called the combo area. Uh, I'll show you kind of how all these areas interact with each other ultimately throughout this video. I'm just kind of explaining the first steps of where these areas are. So like I said, the middle area here is going to be your combo area. Down here is going to be where all your energy goes, so it's your energy area. Uh, over here on your right hand side, kind of in the middle of your mat, is going to be your deck zone. Here is going to be what's called the drop area, graveyard as other people know. Here is called the warp, or warp area. We'll get into that with this particular deck. Uh, this deck will actually kind of cover almost everything in this particular game, so we're not going to, we'll get into almost everything. If I don't cover something, I'll probably come back later or uh, ask it in the comments and I'll fix it and I'll answer those questions throughout the video, or I'll answer them in the comments. Uh, the final zone is going to be right here to the, right underneath usually uh, your leader card is going to be your life. Kind of laid out however you want. Uh, your life total comes out to eight. And I'll show you how I lay out my life, but you can lay it out however you like, as long as it's kind of in this general vicinity. Most of the stuff's going to stay the same. So, like I said, I'm going to kind of sh run you through just this game in general. And uh, we'll kind of just go step by step on everything. So, just like Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, anything, this game starts with a uh, first hand. Ours is going to start with actually an opening six card hand. Now, I'm going to kind of just lay these down. One, because I also honestly got to use my hand to record, but I also kind of show you what this is going to be. So, six cards and opening hand. Now, the difference between this game and most others is the uh, allowed of mulligan. So, this particular game allows you to mulligan however many cards you like out of your six. And once you do that, is you're going to shuffle that into your library. And once you're done with that, you'll uh, draw back to those cards. So, for this particular deck those three I definitely do not want an opening hand so probably what we're gonna do here let me set this sucker up like so for now so I can kind of shuffle this up so like I said you ultimately get to shuffle these cards back in and you'll allow your opponent to obviously cut the deck uh, when you're shuffling and whatnot so no biggie there. Now, I pitched what I would call as pitch, so that's what I did is I rotate those three in. And then what I did is I drew another three cards. Now, once you draw these three, no matter what you got, you cannot mulligan again. So obviously I got a worse hand just because I got these two and then a seven drop. This particular deck does not like having this much stuff, but that's okay for now. This is just showing. Now once you've done that mulligan, what you gotta do is your next top eight off the top of your deck go to your life. So one, two, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I just have to grab eight. Cool. Alright, so this is how I lay mine out. It's just easier to grab whenever you're losing life. Uh, leader card up in the top left, life underneath it, just like so. You can have it however you like. Uh, later on, in another video, me and uh, my buddy will actually show you, but this is kind of how he likes laying his life out. If you actually get a play mat for this particular game, your life is actually laid out like so, all eight dropped like that. But that's, like I said, it just kind of depends on each player. I lay mine out like so. It's just easier for me, easier to count what on, so on and so forth. All right. So, now the difference also with this game is when you choose who goes first you don't get a really choice so however you decide whoever however you decide however someone's going to go first or decide on that so what I like to do is I do a dice roll with a random side 20 usually high roll wins if they win they go first so just roll that 
whatever, whoever gets the highest or lowest, whoever you want, has to go first. If they win by every means, however you like it. So if you say low roll, if I rolled a two and then the other person rolls a nine, I go first because I lost the rolls, if that's how you want to do it. Me and my buddy do high roll wins, they have to go first. Uh, you don't get a choice in that matter, you have to go first. Now let's say I'm going first. Uh, there is no, you don't get a draw, and you cannot attack in your first step. So this, your leader card obviously can't attack, and the basics of the card, or most cards, I shouldn't say the leader card, we should go with the regular card here. So with a battle card, is the type of card is up in the right hand corner. This is the name of the card. I'm sorry my camera sucks, so I may not get a clear description or at least what the cards look like, but you kind of get a general idea. Uh, upper left hand side is going to be a energy cost. <clears throat> now this particular deck is black, so you're not going to see any colors, but if you run into any other colors, like say we'll go blue, on the card itself you see right there in the upper left hand corner. Now let's take it out of the sleeve here. It might be a little easier. So you see in the upper left hand corner how it has a blue dot and a one. So it costs one total energy. One of those energy have to be a blue. Uh, it varies on each color and the amount obviously for each card but that's kind of the gist of it this is a black deck so it doesn't matter what I use so this card would cost seven energy I'm gonna kind of show you how this works so if I'm going first you have three different phases you have what's called a charge phase a main phase and end phase in your charge phase you untap or basically put everything in active mode so there's two modes active is like so and that is rest mode so ultimately what you do is you change everything to active mode you'll draw a card if you're anything past the first player and then you'll play your energy energy is any card so all your cards are basically energy they can produce an energy whatever the color of the card is which is here in the bottom right hand corner right there that's the color produces so like I said you know energy cost, description of what the card does, attack, combo ability. Down here is going to be the color of the or the color of the card. And then also uh, the character, the special trait and the era is all going to be right here. Yeah, see that kind of in the bottom right hand corner there. It's going to have those three different traits and it's going to tell you what this card is. <clears throat> we'll get into each part of this as the video goes on. Combo is kind of the biggest thing here, but like I said, so when you play them as energy, they're upside down in the bottom section of your <clears throat> your play area, play mats, wherever you want to do it with. A lot of Dragon Ball players will have a Dragon Ball map with energy combo battle area. I'll print it on the map. If you buy a starter deck, it comes with like a really cheesy version of that, and it'll show you kind of how it runs out. All right, so so if I'm like I said, I'm going first. I'm gonna play an energy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my hand. And if there's anything I can use, which is going to be one of these two here, a zero drop and a one cost, so right here, I'll see if I can use those. Now, normally you want to put a battle card, which is going to say right here in the top right-hand corner. You don't necessarily want to use these extras unless they're used for something anything good. Like this particular card, send three cards from drop area to your warp, draw a card. Your opponents may not activate counterplay. That's what this card does. I have nothing, obviously, in my drop area or my graveyard. I'm not going to use this first. The next one's a battle card. It's called Putin and Demigra's Thrall. This one has blocker. When I play this card, my leader card is Demigra. Which, Demigra, when it says that, on this particular card, it has basically what's called the bracket. So it's actually going to look like this. And it's going to say Demigra in between those two brackets. So kind of like a greater than or less than sign on either side of that word. And that's actually referring to right here, this top part, which is going to be the character. So as long as my leader is a Demigra here, not up here, here, then I get to use this other ability, which is I place up to two cards from the top of my deck into my drop area. So for this particular deck, that's good. I want things in my drop area. <clears throat> so what you do is you put your energy in rest mode. And you use that one, and you'll put your one card up here in the top area for your battle area. And like I said, this card's auto ability. So, 
we're kind of going to go through that in each step. There's different abilities on these cards. This one has what's called Blocker and Auto. So Blocker is a permanent ability, which is basically, if this card's in active mode, if someone attacks my leader card, I can change the target over here by putting this in rest mode, and now they're targeting this guy instead of targeting my leader card and going after my life here. So that's kind of what that does. And then this auto ability is what I told you earlier, which is if my leader is a Demigra here, I can put the top two cards from my deck into my drop area, which this particular deck likes to do, so I will do that. So top two into my drop area or my graveyard. <clears throat> and ultimately that's kind of your starting initial turn is something close to this um, in any deck really it's going to be a one drop do something and it'll go into an auto ability usually which is right here it's going to be in this general description auto ability when it's played something's going to happen that's what most cards do so we're going to say that's going to be that first turn if we go to a second turn like I said we're in a charge phase so we're going to untap everything you draw your card, put it in your hand, and that's your chart. And then you uh, put a card down for your energy. So you see, I got kind of two of these. I probably want to go ahead and drop one of these as energy. It doesn't matter how you do your energy. If you like stacking them like uh, in Magic, or if you like doing it just kind of like so, it does not matter. It's however you like to play it. <clears throat> um, you have to drop energy in your charge phase. If you do not drop energy in your charge phase, you cannot drop energy the rest of the turn. So if I didn't put that down, and I went ahead and tapped this and started doing stuff, I cannot put energy again. There's no secondary charge phase in order to do that. So you have to put this down in charge phase. Uh, your main phase does not allow you to put energy down. Once you're done with that charge phase, you go dire directly into main phase. Which, as you see, there's nothing in my hand I want to be able to do. So in main phase, there's going to be basically where you can put things down. You go into a battle phase as well. So this is all in the main phase. So if I'm going into a battle phase, uh, I probably wouldn't attack with that. Because most of your leader cards are going to sit with 10,000 attack. Which is right here in the bottom left hand corner. That's a pretty common uh, base stat for your leaders is 10,000. doesn't matter if they're an ultra rare card or all the way down to a common uh, leader card. Most of them start off as 10,000. So this card's attack is only 4,000. Uh, this one's 10, so I'll probably attack with my leader card. So you attack with the leader card. His auto ability is when this card attacks the leader card, place three cards on the top of the deck in the drop area. So you gotta make sure you do these auto triggers. Because <clears throat> what happens is if you miss an auto ability, it has to happen. You don't have a choice on the auto abilities unless it states you may do something. So unless it states you may do something, you cannot uh, ignore the auto trigger. So this one is when it attacks a leader card, which now that I finally fixed the stupid, my camera, now you can kind of see that. So as I was saying, you know, earlier, here's the uh, character Demigra. Here's the uh, special trait, which is a demon god. Here's the era, so dark demon, so on, uh, Realm Saga. Uh, this is black, a rare card. This is the card number. So BT4-098, uh, R for rare, power 10,000, awaken, auto, and a uh, leader card, and the name of the card. And like I was saying for this one. You know, here's that battle. Yeah, there's the battle. There's the extra, it says. And in the bottom, it says it again, you know, character, special trait, era. This is a common card, what the card number is, and the combo ability up here. So like I said, that's kind of what you're looking at usually when you're looking at the cards. <clears throat> so as I was continuing, we're in com combat. So we'll actually do a full combat. So what's going to happen is my leader card is going to sit here in the leader area and it's going to do what's called attacking. Now... Usually, like I said, by this turn you have at least one guy out and a leader card. If they didn't, if they have this set up like so, like say they attacked you like this, you have to, you can target either one of these two. If they attacked you like this, so they only attacked you with their battle card and not their leader card, you have to take the battle card out first before you can go through the leader card. 
Now let's say they left it like this. You can, you have to go through the leader card to get to the life, and that's it. You don't have to target this. There's nothing. You don't even have to worry about that card. So let's say they left it like this. I attack with my Demigra, and I do what's called a combo step. Excuse me. There's actually a few... Battle phases gets very tricky because there's a lot of things that go into it. So, um... <clears throat> Battle phase has a lot more steps involved than just attack and so on and so forth, attack and defend. So in the battle phase, as I declare an attacker and I, tr I choose my target of anything that's in rest mode. Now, if they don't have anything in rest mode, the only thing I can target ultimately is their leader card, unless it specifies on your card that you can target things that are in active mode, which is this. So... I choose that target, and what ultimately happens then is the auto ability triggers first, which say like on this card is, when it attacks a leader card, place three cards uh, from the top of the deck in my drop area. That auto trigger has to happen first. So I, that auto trigger happens, I do that ability. Now what happens is the opponent's allowed to do a counter attack, or go ahead and declare a blocker if they had a card with the ability blocker like this one does. If they have that ability, they can go ahead and use it, change the target, block, and they're done. It KOs that, we're good to go. Now, if they tie, so say 10,000 and 10,000, <clears> happens quite often. The attacker wins the tie. So, what happens usually with attackers is, I'm going to attack, say, with that, I do what's called comboing. Is you set a card sideways in the center part of whatever you're playing with. <clears throat> and right here, see that? It says zero cost plus 5,000. So I don't have to tap any energy, and it adds 5,000 power to whatever I'm comboing to. So it adds 5,000 power right now to my Demigra, which is already 10,000 power. So he's up to 15,000. Now there's another one, uh, which I discussed in my last video, which is called Super Combo, which usually says zero plus zero. So zero plus zero. Now, if it says 0 plus 0, it'll give you stipulations in the card of what it's going to give you and what stipulations you have to match to. Usually, you have to have like 4 less life. You'll draw a card, it'll give you plus 10,000. That's kind of your norm for super combos. So, this one I'm using, say, to suit, to combo into this, it's giving my Demeager now plus 5,000. Now, if I wanted to keep boosting, you can keep boosting with any cards as long as they you have, say, the energy for it. So, like, say, I have, you know, two energy open. I have in my hand this Temporal Darkness Demigra. So on the side here, he costs one, he adds 10,000 power. So if I wanted to tap one energy and add another 10,000, he's now adding 15,000 to a 10,000. So he's 25,000 power. And honestly, you can do that with all the cards in your hand as long as they have a combo ability right here. Extra cards usually don't have combo ability. As you can see, there's nothing on the side of this card, so don't worry about it. So if I comboed with, say, all three of these cards, I get... 5, 15, 20,000 plus my 10,000 my combo power so it's 30,000 total power if he ties that, if my opponent ties that, I win it'll either KO a battle card or it goes through their life so if you beat the leader card, they have to take one card from their life and it adds to their hand unless it's your card says critical if it says critical, that life card goes into the drop area here so that's kind of what you're looking at so that's kind of a simple battle. Uh, nothing ultimately happens. So say I attack this leader. Normally his leader, like I said, is 10,000. I boost it to 30. Uh, he'll probably end up taking that. And if he takes it, he'll take the one card from his life, like so, and just put it right in hand. That's kind of how his would look. Or mine would look too. It would probably be like this already too. Alright. So once I've done that, now that battle with that guy is done. Now this is what makes this part of the game really tricky. Is you're still in main phase. So what you can do is now I can use extra cards or other battle cards in my hand and still play. So that attack is done. He's attacked. I can now go back to my hand and say, oh, I want to use this minus killy zone. So I'm going to go ahead and play it for zero. Which is, you know, send three cards from your drop area to your warp. Draw a card, and your opponent cannot activate counterplays. So, I use that. I'll take three, and send them up here to my warp. Now, I like to usually turn my warp sideways. Just because you know it's in warp. 
and then this is the rest of the ability triggers. I draw a card. Now, this particular deck is called a warp deck. It likes to use things out of this area or send things to the warp area and boost things. So, with this deck, it has what's called the Overrealm right there. So it says Overrealm 3, and it'll describe it, every card tells you what it does. So, Overrealm is I have to have at least three cards in my drop area, and they'll go to the warp area, and then I cast this for free without having to pay its energy cost of three. Ooh, sorry guys, my camera sucks to be honest. Do not mean to make it sucky, but it happens. <clears throat> now, because I drew this card, I want to play it because now I can still, I still in my, in, ma in main phase, so I can still attack with this particular guy. And he's 15,000 power. And his other ability down here is if he has three or more cards in your warp area, It'll gain plus 5,000 power. If I have five or more, it gains another 5,000 power. So he's 10,000 power if I have five cards in my warp. So when I use warp, what happens is if I have to have at least three cards in my drop area, so as long as there's at least three, the whole graveyard gets sent to the warp area, and then this guy gets sent out for free. So now that's my board state so far in my turn. And I'll probably go ahead and attack with him for 25,000. Now, I can't use minus Killy Zone because there's no point to it. I have nothing in my graveyard right now. So I'd probably end turn at that point. When I end turn, Overrealm sends this guy into the warp. So I no longer have him in the field. He's now in my warp. So that's kind of, you got to play this right. Uh, and every card, when you actually look at them and they tell you what they are, it'll tell you what you can do. Overrealm, you can only use one time per turn unless you actually have... This particular leader card in the Awaken ability. His Awaken ability is he has, uh, you can use Overrealm and Dark Overrealm twice per turn. And uh, at once per turn, you can choose three black cards in my warp and place in your drop area. So that's his Awaken ability. But right now, he's not Awakened. And we'll get to Awaken here in a minute. So right now, we're just kind of going through simple stuff. <clears throat> the simple process of the game so that's been my com that's my uh, battle step so far once you're done with your battle phase in general all your battle phases rotating through main phase coming back to battle phase rotating back uh, once you're done with that you've ended your turn or you've ended your battle phase that's pretty much in now you're in the end phase end phase is really nothing except for certain cards tell you at the end of your turn do this like usually it's untap this creature untap uh, other creatures of this specific type untap energy so on and so forth <clears throat> None of my cards do that in this particular deck So we will just end up moving on and the next player to go they do the same thing charge phase main phase end phase now That's the basic setup of Playing the game is charge phase main phase end phase and main phase you go to battle phase and After er every single battle with per card on the battlefield uh, you go back to the start of main, and you can do it again. So that's kind of what it is. Now, ultimately something kind of like this would be your board. So this would kind of be your board, ultimately. I'm kind of skipping through a lot of things, so I'm not playing this whole deck out because there's no point to play the deck out. Uh, I'm going to be explaining this deck in a later video so you'll know what's happening I'm just kind of explaining the game set and how it happens and like I said this is kind of how I'm playing my hand just because of the fact I have to hold a stupid camera so in this particular setup now you're down to four life this is usually when your leader cards do what's called their awaken ability mm -hmm. and what this is, is it says on the card when you have four or less life you can choose up to two your energy change them to active and awaken this card only the leader cards have two sides, and they're not all foil on one side, obviously. My Demigre just happens to be foil on one side. So once this Demigre awakens, that's how he sits in your leader ability. Usually their awaken gives them a stronger attack power, and their abilities become a little more, uh, I guess you could say, broken. Uh, this one, like, this whole deck is based on the warp area, like we've been describing earlier. Uh, overwhelm and dark overwhelm. This one allows you to do overwhelm twice or dark overwhelm twice, as well as put three cards from warp to drop. So this card does a couple things that helps 
this deck kind of move along and become a little more stronger. And that's what makes this deck re relatively well, especially with this particular leader card. Uh, but once you get to the Awaken, like I said, he becomes stronger. Every single leader does that. Uh, my beer is from the previous video. You awaken him, 15,000 power. His abilities become a little more broken. Instead of KOing a 2 or less, you're KOing a 3 or less, and then he has an instant win condition. So that's, like I said, most of your leader cards are going to sit that way. So like I said, that's kind of how your board works. Um, and that's kind of the gist of a basic rundown of how a game would run and how you would go turn by turn. And ultimately what you're trying to do is get the, your uh, opponent's life down to zero. Once you get them down to zero, you win, obviously, or if they deck out. So if they can't draw anything out of their deck zone, you win as well from there. Um... The only thing we uh, I need to go into detail probably a little more is your battle phase. Uh, really, which is just the biggest probably difference is going to be something like if you're doing this. So if your opponent has this particular guy out and he attacked with them, and he didn't attack with the leader, you have to hit that. Like I said, if you attacked here and here, that's 15 and 15,000. Now you go to that combo step. Uh, when you combo, you can combo with either anything in your hand or anything that's still in active mode on your battlefield as long as you can pay the energy cost if it's zero cost obviously you just put it into a rest into your combo area and you'll combo it off and if you're comboing though from anywhere hand or battle area once you combo that card it goes to your drop area so comboing basically burns the card uh, if you don't combo and you're attacking it's fine attackers cannot be KO'd by defenders only defenders can be KO'd in general uh, ties go to attacking card first, not defender. And that's basically a gist of how to play the game. It's very, very simple rundown of how this game runs. This game is somewhat complicated. It's not very complicated, just the battle phase is more complicated than anything else. Uh, everything else is pretty much straightforward. Uh, if you play any other card game, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Magic, uh, anything along those lines. This is nothing like the old Dragon Ball Z game, but if you play any of those three, you'll do pretty well. Uh, I find if you're a Magic player, you'll probably understand this deck a lot or this game a lot easier, just for the simple fact that uh, because of the energy base is your mana base and as a Magic player, uh, there's no tribute summons unless you're evolving and doing other abilities with the cards. So uh, that's kind of a gist of how to play the game. Um, like I said, every card has different abilities, and they'll say them on the card themselves. Uh, this particular deck is really great teaching of all the abilities in a deck. Uh, if I want to do something like that, I'll actually pull a buddy into my video. Probably it'll be uh, this weekend or later on next within the next week, and we'll do a whole run through with our two best learning decks. Uh, nothing complicated, and it'll go through pretty much every ability in the game. And you'll be able to learn everything that's going on and what's how f slow or fast really everything goes. Um, yeah, I'd say that's pretty much it for the most part on these particular games. This game style. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything along those lines for this particular game, uh, Dragon Ball Super, shoot me a comment, shoot me a direct message. I don't care. However you want to do this. Uh, uh, there are no stupid questions. This game is so new. I have no problems answering any question. I am a judge for this game as well, so any question you have for this game, let me know. Shoot me a comment, and I'll uh, look into it. I'll definitely respond relatively quickly. Uh, and this particular deck, Demigra, it will be explained in another video later on, probably this week. I don't feel like doing another video tonight just because I explained a beer deck earlier, as well as now playstyle of this deck or play style of how to play this game. So, like I said, anything uh, you guys need, shoot me a comment, shoot me a direct message. Uh, everything will be in the in this video. Thanks, guys.